no your is code provisions short lecture series in this short lecture i will explain about clause number 6.2 that is assumptions so for the purpose of uh, usage of uh, is 1893 three assumptions have been included included number 1 is resonance condition and uh, number 2 is likelihood of uh, heavy winds or uh, high floods or uh, uh, sea waves and the third one is uh, modulus of elasticity so let's go into the details yeah so section 6 that is general principles and design criteria in that 6.2 assumptions so what course says is the following assumptions shall be made in the earthquake resistant design of structures so the first one being the earthquake ground motions are complex and irregular consisting of several frequencies and of varying amplitudes each lasting for small duration so this earthquake is a something like a random signal kind of thing so if we uh, transform that uh, and check so say if you take fft so we can see that there are many many frequencies present in it but it doesn't mean that this all these frequencies are present at uh, all the time instants that means if the if the ground motion is of say uh, 60 seconds then these frequency pulses will not last for 60 seconds so they will be for certain Uh, periods and the combination of that will be a very uh, complex kind of thing so what in such case so if these uh, frequencies are lasting or varying amplitudes are lasting for very small duration what is the assumption actually so assumption is what code says is therefore usually resonance of the type as visualized under steady state sinusoidal excitations will not occur as it would be need, as it would need time to build up such amplitudes so resonance condition is after few cycles only that condition will be built so if say uh, a frequency a natural period of a structure is say some say 1.2 seconds and uh, uh, earthquake has 1.2 seconds uh, period in it but it is lasting only for small duration of time then that would not cause any resonance that's what is the meaning of this uh, assumption so what it says is there is a uh, like condition also but there are exceptions where resonance like conditions have been seen to occur between long distance waves and tall buildings founded on deep soft soil so why this uh, uh, a note is kept in this clause or in this assumption is because uh, like say long distance waves what happens is high frequency waves will die out and low frequency waves will be will have some amplitude and low frequency means uh, high natural period so that means they will affect the tall buildings if number of cycles of such oscillation are more in the ground motion or building uh, oscillates more number of times under such uh, oscillation then there might be some damage so that that's why this condition is there but usually what course is is that resonance like condition may not occur in the uh, buildings that is the first assumption the second assumption is see earthquake itself strong earthquake ground motion itself is uh, like having a return period of uh, say sometimes 30 years 40 years 50 years something like that so and also if we uh, look at say maximum flood or maximum sea waves or high winds so indiv- independently if we look at this so likelihood that means return period of this high wind return period of maximum flood or maximum sea wave that also is number of years uh, varies but it is very less likely that these two occur together that means strong earthquake ground motion and heavy wind occur together so that's what code is saying uh, strong earthquake ground motion and maximum flood or strong earthquake ground motion and maximum sea waves so there is less likelihood so that is the assumption which code is uh, making so earthquake is not likely to occur simultaneously 
Then the third assumption. Third assumption is the values of elastic modulus of materials whenever required will be taken as per static analysis unless more definite values are available for use in dynamic conditions. So actually this elastic modulus itself, the computation of other, uh, the, which is coming from the testing that itself has large variation. So what code is suggesting is static values of elastic modulus are uh, to be used in the dynamic analysis. But if there is a definite value, which if it is available, under dynamic conditions that can be used in dynamic analysis. But let us look at say, what are the values which are given in other codes, other IS codes. Let's look at that. Say for concrete, which is given in IS 456, modulus of elasticity value 5,000 under root FCK. So FCK being in Newton per millimeter square, that is rate of concrete. Then for steel, ES, Length modulus of steel is equal to 2.1 into 10 to the power of 5 Newton per millimeter square. And uh, masonry, modulus of elasticity per masonry is given in IS 1893 itself. That is, uh, uh, EM is equal to 550 FM. And FM is 0.433, FB raised to the power of 0.64, and FMO raised to the power of 0.36. So, what is this empirical expression? This is FB is uh, uh, like strength of brick and FMO is the strength of mortar. So for these values, actually code is suggesting CIS 456 for concrete and uh, 800 for steel, 1343 for uh, pre-stressed uh, concrete and, uh, and other codes 1905 and uh, uh, 2974. Part one, two, three, four, five. So this is uh, for uh, machine foundations, and uh, this is for uh, masonry buildings. And yeah, so four, five, six plain and reinforced concrete, eight hundred for steel, one, three, four, three is for pre-stressed concrete, and nineteen point five, uh, one nine zero five for structural use of unreinforced masonry, and two nine seven five design and construction of machine foundations. So these are the three assumptions which uh, IS 1893 is making for the purpose of usage of the utility of the code. So, yep, thank you. So the intention of this uh, short picture is to help students in practicing units to understand IS code provisions in a better manner.